Hello again. Today we're going to look at some examples in detail of generating reagent and closure script apps using Claude AI. If you want to see how to set up the project to do this yourself, check out this video. All right, let's take a look. Now that we've got everything set up, we can test with our first app. Please create a simple timer with start and stop buttons. Okay, let's see if it works. Start. Stop. Reset. The basic functionality seems to work. Now let's take a look at the code. Starting at the bottom, we can see there's a bunch of styles defined. These are things like setting up the timer display and the controls and centering them. Let's take a look at the actual closure script code. The whole app is mounted at the end of the script. We can see here there's a main component defined which contains the main parts of the app. Next, we have on-click handlers for the reset, stop, and start timer buttons. The start timer just sets an interval, updating the state. Next, we have this helper function, format time, to display the time in the correct format. Finally, at the very top, we can see all of the state is held in this single variable, which is fairly common practice for reagent apps. Of course, when you're doing live reloading, you usually have a def once here. The whole thing is loaded and run, using Skittle, which is a closure script interpreter that runs in the browser. Okay, let's try another example. Please create a simple to-do list app. Certainly. So the first thing we can note here immediately is that this time it's failed. We got a Skittle error due to a misplaced or mismatching brace. Let's try again. Please create a simple to-do list app. Certainly. Okay, so we have our basic to-do list app. Let's try adding our first to-do item. Nothing happens. Again, it's failed. Let's try again. This time I've modified the prompt slightly. Please create a simple minimal to-do list app. Try to keep the implementation as concise as possible. Certainly. Okay, we failed again. Skittle error. Message, nested function literals not allowed. Oh well, let's try one more time. Certainly. All right, will this implementation work? All right, it works. Can we check the items? Nice, it crosses them out as you'd expect. What about deleting? Very good. Okay, let's take a look at the code. So we have some minimal style set up here. Here we can see the to-do list component, which is mounted into the app. The to-do list component includes an input to add a new to-do, a button to click add, and then a UL containing the to-do items, all of this in one component. As you'd expect, the to-do item is an li tag with a checkbox input, the to-do itself, and a button for deleting. To add the to-do, it swaps the app state and conjures the new to-do onto the to-dos list. It's nice that it's created a randomly generated ID here. Finally, the entire app state is included in a single top-level atom, which is fairly common practice for small reagent apps. Overall, after a couple of failed attempts, this implementation is fine. Now let's try something a little more tricky. Please create an app for creating image thumbnails. The user can choose an image on their file system. The image should be displayed so it fits on the screen and loaded into a canvas element and resized. The resized thumbnail image should then be displayed above the image. Certainly! Alright, let's see how it does on this first attempt. Okay, so it's displaying the original image as we asked. However, the thumbnail is stretched out. So I'm going to ask it to fix that issue. 
The thumbnail appears stretched. Please scale it so it has the correct ratio. Okay, let's try it again. This time the thumbnail appears scaled correctly and the original image is also displayed. So the app works as specified. What does the code look like? We have some minimal styles at the bottom again. Then the main component of the app lays everything out. We have an on change handler, which uses the file reader to load the file. It uses callbacks to process the resulting data and stores it in the state. We have a create thumbnail function, which as specified uses a canvas element to resize the image. Finally, we have the top level state. All in all, this is a pretty simple implementation and it does do what we asked. Let's try one more example, a compound interest calculator. And I've asked Claude to use SVG to graph the interest earned over time. Wow, no certainly. And our implementation has failed this time. Unmatched delimiter. Let's try that again with a small tweak to the prompt. Certainly. Wow, this time it looks like it's worked. We've got the principal, the interest rate, the time, the compound frequency per year. The graph looks a little strange. Let's try changing our interest rate to 3% and we see the graph flatten out as you'd expect. 10%, change the principal amount, change the time. It's pretty cool. So as you can see, we've got a reactive compound interest calculator here with a graph to show what's going on. I'm pretty happy with this implementation. Let's take a look at the code. So we have our main component here, compound interest calculator. And as you'd expect, it's got the stuff that's on the screen. Compound interest calculator, principal, interest rate, time, now, interestingly, it's broken out a component called input field here. And here it specifies which value to update in the state. It's also broken out SVG graph into a separate component, which makes a lot of sense, really. The SVG graph component does what you'd expect. It returns an SVG with the points drawn on the graph. The input field component is interesting. It's a generic input and the on change swaps with the key that was specified, the value that came out. Then we have helper functions for generating the data points for the graph and calculating the compound interest. Of course, these are reactively updated as the inputs are changed. And at the top, we have a top level state atom holding the entire state of the app, just as you'd expect. So again, this is a fairly reasonable implementation. So that's it for now. I hope this has given you a good idea of what kind of reagent and closure script apps you can generate with Claude AI. And we've seen some of the limitations which can fairly quickly be overcome just by running the same prompt again. Cheers, thanks for watching.